dead satellite sends a one-off pulse. On June 13, 2024, astronomers using Australia's ASCAP radio telescope detected a single approximately 30 nanosecond radio burst coming from the vicinity of the long-defunct Relay 2 communications satellite. Relay 2 was launched in 1964 and decommissioned in 1967, making any new signal seemingly impossible. The ASCAP array recorded an extraordinarily bright, narrow band pulse between 695.5 and 1031.5 megahertz with a peak brightness estimated in the hundreds of kilojohnskis, momentarily outshining the background sky. The event has never repeated, ruling out scheduled beacons or ordinary cosmic sources. Engineers suspect either a sudden electrostatic discharge from decades of charge buildup or a micrometeoroid impact creating a brief plasma cloud, but no single mechanism fits all the data. With Relay 2 slowly decaying and no functioning systems left, the burst remains a one-off anomaly that challenges current models of space debris behavior. The famous WOW signal. On August 15, 1977, Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope captured a 72-second transmission so extraordinary that astronomer Jerry Eamon circled it on a printout and scrawled the word WOW. The signal appeared at 1420 megahertz, the natural emission line of neutral hydrogen, a frequency SETI researchers consider the most logical channel for interstellar contact. Its intensity rose and fell exactly as Earth's rotation would produce for a stationary deep space source, yet follow-up scans found nothing. Decades of investigation have yielded competing theories, from a passing cometary hydrogen cloud to reflections of secret satellites, but none explain the signal's precise frequency, power, and perfect celestial alignment. Nearly half a century later, the WOW signal remains the most tantalizing one-time event in the search for life beyond Earth, a cosmic question mark with only a single sheet of printer paper as evidence. FRB190520. Fast radio bursts, FRBS, are millisecond-long flashes of radio energy from deep space, and FRB190520 remains one of the strangest. Discovered in 2019, this object not only produces frequent, highly energetic bursts, but also emits a persistent, weaker radio signal between bursts, something rarely seen in other FRBS. Initial reports described it as a hyperactive repeater, but follow-up studies show it does not grow louder over time. It simply fires far more often than typical FRBS. Located in a dwarf galaxy nearly 3 billion light-years away, FRB190520 challenges existing models of magnetars and other proposed engines, because the constant background emission suggests a long-lived energy source. Despite years of monitoring with the Very Large Array and other telescopes, astronomers still can't explain why this particular burst behaves so differently from the rest. FRB 20250316A, brightest burst on record. In March 2025, telescopes around the world captured one of the most powerful fast radio bursts ever recorded. Designated FRB 20250316A or RBFLOAT, the flash released more energy in a single millisecond than the sun emits in days. Thanks to rapid follow-up observations with CHIME and the James Webb Space Telescope, astronomers were able to trace the burst to a galaxy called NGC 4,141, roughly 130 million light years away. Pinpointing the location of a one-off FRB is rare, and the environment around this burst surprised scientists. It came from a region with relatively old stars rather than the young, active stellar nurseries where many fast radio bursts are thought to form. The discovery raises new questions about what drives these cosmic explosions and shows how much we still have to learn about the universe's most fleeting signals. Repeating 18-minute pulses. In early 2022, astronomers in Western Australia discovered a radio source that acted like nothing in the sky should. While scanning the Milky Way, the Murchison Widefield Array Telescope picked up a signal that turned on for about one minute, turned off, and then came back every 18 minutes, like clockwork. This cycle repeated for three months and then vanished completely. Known pulsars and magnetars can flash every few seconds, but none are known to pause for nearly 20 minutes and then resume with such perfect timing. The mysterious source was located within our own galaxy, roughly 4,000 light years away, but follow-up observations failed to catch it again. Early theories focused on an ultra-long period magnetar or a slow-spinning neutron star, both of which would rewrite what we know about stellar physics. In 2024, researchers reported that some similar slow-repeating signals can actually come from red dwarf stars with white dwarf companions whose magnetic interactions can mimic pulsars. That discovery offers a more ordinary explanation for some cases, but the original 18-minute source remains unconfirmed, leaving astronomers with tantalizing recordings and a mystery that is only partially solved. ASCAP J1832-0911, the 44-minute mystery. In 2020, in 2025, astronomers using Australia's ASKAP telescope detected a signal unlike anything seen before. A faint point deep in the Milky Way suddenly came to life, blasting out bursts of radio waves that lasted about two minutes and then went silent, only to return every 44 minutes with 
clock-like precision. The object, nicknamed ASKAPG 1832-0911, even emitted X-rays in sync with the radio pulses, a first for a long-period source of this kind. Known pulsars spin far faster, and magnetars typically produce different emission patterns, leaving no easy explanation for such slow, dual-wavelength flashes. Some researchers suggest an exotic magnetar or a white dwarf binary, but none of the models fully match the data. After a few weeks, the signals faded or dropped below detection, leaving astronomers with a handful of recordings and a fresh puzzle in our own galaxy, the cosmic hum. Astronomers studying deep space have discovered a faint but constant background hum of radio energy that shouldn't exist. This signal is not the normal hiss of stars or the well-known cosmic microwave background left over from the Big Bang. Instead, it is a steady radio noise that is six times stronger than any current models predict. Scientists first noticed the excess while using the ARCADE balloon experiment and later confirmed it with other radio telescopes. The hum appears to come from every direction in the sky and does not match the pattern of known galaxies, black holes, or other cosmic objects. Some researchers think it could be the combined glow of billions of very faint early galaxies that we cannot see individually. Others have proposed more exotic ideas, such as signals from the first generation of stars or even the annihilation of dark matter particles. Despite years of study, no single explanation fits all the data. For now, the cosmic hum remains a soft but persistent reminder that space is buzzing with energy we still don't understand. Jupiter's Electromagnetic Choirs When NASA's Galileo spacecraft visited Jupiter in the 1990s, it picked up radio sounds that seemed almost musical. Scientists called them whistler mode chorus emissions, but to human ears they resemble birds, chirping, whistles, and faint singing. These signals are created when energetic electrons in Jupiter's huge magnetic field interact with plasma around the planet. The electrons move in waves that produce radio tones, and when the spacecraft's instruments converted those signals into audio, they sounded like an eerie electronic choir. Although researchers understand the basic process, some details remain puzzling. The strength and variety of the sounds are far greater than similar emissions around Earth, and at times they change without clear connection to Jupiter's storms or magnetic activity. Because Jupiter is surrounded by intense radiation belts and dozens of moons, scientists continue to study how its environment creates such powerful music. For listeners on Earth, the recordings are both beautiful and unsettling. A giant planet singing across the vacuum of space in a way no one expected when the mission first launched. South Atlantic Anomaly One of the strangest places in Earth's magnetic field is a region over the South Atlantic Ocean known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. Here, the planet's magnetic shield dips unusually close to the surface, creating a kind of weak spot where charged particles from space can penetrate much deeper than normal. Satellites passing through this zone often experience unexpected radiation spikes, sudden computer resets, and occasional instrument failures. Astronauts on the International Space Station report more frequent cosmic ray flashes when flying through it, as high-energy particles hit their eyes and create brief flashes of light. Scientists track the anomaly because it appears to be slowly growing and shifting westward, but they do not fully understand why Earth's magnetic field is weakening in this specific area. Some theories involve the swirling motion of molten iron deep inside the planet's core, while others suggest interactions with ancient magnetic patches on the ocean floor. Whatever the cause, the South Atlantic anomaly serves as a real-world reminder that even our own planet can generate puzzling signals from space. UVB-76, the buzzer. For more than 40 years, a mysterious Russian radio station known as UVB-76 has broadcast a constant low-pitched buzz across the shortwave band. The signal can be heard around the world on ordinary radios, and it rarely changes. Just a repeating buzz every second, 24 hours a day. But occasionally the buzzing stops and a voice message in Russian cuts through, reading a short string of names, numbers, or code words before the buzz resumes. The station first appeared in the late 1970s, and despite countless attempts by hobbyists and journalists, no one has confirmed its exact purpose. Many believe it is part of a military communication system used to send coded orders to distant units. Others think it might serve as a dead hand signal. If the buzz ever stopped for good, it could trigger automated defenses during a nuclear conflict. Although transmitters have moved from site to site and the signal occasionally changes frequency, the buzzing continues to this day. Its persistence and secrecy have turned UVB-76 into one of the longest-running and creepiest radio mysteries on the planet. Lincolnshire Poacher For more than 30 years, a shortwave station nicknamed the Lincolnshire Poacher sent out one of the strangest broadcasts on Earth. Listeners tuning in between the late 1970s and 2008 heard a cheerful English folk melody, the opening bars of the song The Lincolnshire Poacher, followed by a mechanical voice reading groups of five numbers. The tune played at the start of every transmission 
celebration, almost like a doorbell announcing that the coded numbers were about to begin. Radio hobbyists tracked the signal to a Royal Air Force base on the island of Cyprus, which placed it within easy range of the Middle East and Eastern Europe. Most experts believe the station was operated by British intelligence to send one-way instructions to undercover agents. The five number groups could be decoded only by someone with the proper one-time pad, making the messages unbreakable even if intercepted. In 2008, the broadcast stopped without warning. No government has ever admitted running the station, and no one outside the intelligence world knows what the final messages contain. Today, only recordings remain of this upbeat but unsettling melody of secret orders. Swedish Rhapsody Another legendary number station is known as the Swedish Rhapsody, famous for its eerie use of a childlike voice. Beginning in the 1950s, radio listeners across Europe could hear a music box version of the classical piece Swedish Rhapsody number, one followed by a little girl's voice reading long strings of numbers in German. At first, many thought a real child was speaking, but later analysis showed the voice was created by an early speech synthesizer device, which made it sound even more unnatural. Signals were traced to transmitters in Poland, leading experts to suspect that the station was run by Polish intelligence during the Cold War. Like other number stations, each set of numbers was likely an encrypted message that could only be understood with a special code key. Although the original broadcasts faded away after the fall of the Soviet Union, recordings still circulate online. The combination of cheerful music and robotic child counting continues to unsettle listeners, making Swedish Rhapsody one of the most haunting examples of secret communications hidden in plain sight. Attention Station In the 1990s, American intelligence agents stumbled upon a Cuban shortwave broadcast that seemed ordinary at first but turned out to be a key piece of a spy case. The station became known as Attention because each message began with a Spanish voice saying, Attention, Attention, followed by long streams of numbers. Listeners eventually traced the source to transmitters in Havana, but the real breakthrough came when U.S. investigators caught a technical error during one broadcast. A fragment of Radio Havana's regular programming accidentally bled into the signal, proving it was a Cuban operation. The numbers themselves were classic spycraft. Groups of digits read slowly so that field agents could copy them down and decode them, later using a one-time pad. The broadcasts were eventually tied to the Cuban Five, a group of Cuban intelligence officers arrested in the United States in 1998. Court documents revealed that the agents had received instructions by listening to these very transmissions. Although the spy ring was exposed, the station itself continued for years, and even today occasional bursts of unexplained number sequences are still reported, keeping the mystery of attention alive. E06 Englishman Among numbers station fans, one of the most recognizable voices belongs to E06, often called the Englishman. This station features a calm, robotic male voice, reading groups of five numbers in English, each sequence separated by a short electronic tone. The broadcasts have been heard on and off since at least the 1980s, and are usually transmitted on shortwave frequencies that can be received worldwide with an ordinary radio. Despite the English language, radio trackers consistently trace the transmissions to Russian sites, and the ENIGMA classification identifies E06 as part of a Russian intelligence network. The simple format makes the messages easy for agents to write down and decode, while remaining impossible to crack without the matching one-time pad. Although the schedule has changed over the years, E06 still surfaces from time to time, proving that even in the age of encrypted apps, old-school radio espionage continues to whisper across the airwaves. Modern Numbers Hijacks 2024 Shortwave listeners thought number stations were relics of the Cold War, until a new wave of activity appeared in 2024. Throughout the year, hobbyists around the world reported strange incidents where pirate operators hijacked classic spy frequencies, including the famous UVB 76 channel. During these takeovers, the steady buzz or routine number sequences were suddenly replaced by bursts of digital tones, scrambled speech, or encrypted data packets that didn't match any known government format. Some signals lasted only a few minutes before the original station resumed, while others repeated for hours and then vanished without a trace. Radio experts ruled out simple interference because the intrusions were too strong and perfectly tuned to the exact frequencies used by established number stations. Speculation ranges from independent hackers testing new encryption methods to rival intelligence agencies sending covert warnings. Despite careful monitoring, no group has claimed responsibility and no clear pattern has emerged. The 2024 hijacks proved that even in an age of satellite internet and encrypted messaging, the old spy airwaves remain a live battlefield for secret communication. Woodpecker Signal In the late 1970s, shortwave listeners around the world began hearing a loud, rapid tapping sound that earned the nickname Russian Woodpecker. The signal repeated about 10 times per second and was so powerful that it disrupted normal radio traffic and even leaked into home electronics. At first, nobody knew where it came from. Some feared it was an attempt at mind control, while others worried it might be a weapon that could interfere with global communications. Eventually, researchers traced the source to a massive Soviet radar system near Chernobyl called Duga-3. The Duga array was an experimental over-the-horizon radar meant to detect incoming missiles by bouncing signals off the ionosphere. Because it operated at extremely high power, it created the distinctive woodpecker-like knocking that shortwave listeners found so alarming. The station 
Russian shut down after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, but recordings of the original sound still circulate online. The Woodpecker shows how a real military project can generate worldwide mystery and fear, especially when governments stay silent about their technology. GPS Jamming Waves 2024 In early 2024, pilots flying over Eastern Europe began reporting sudden loss of GPS navigation. Commercial jets, private aircraft, and even ships at sea experienced large areas where satellite positioning either gave wildly inaccurate readings or failed completely. Tracking data later showed that more than 1,600 flights were affected in a single month. Investigators traced the interference to powerful jamming signals coming from the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad, a heavily militarized region between Poland and Lithuania. GPS jammers work by flooding satellite frequencies with stronger local signals, overwhelming the weak transmissions from orbit. What shocked aviation experts was the scale and precision of the disruption. Some planes lost their position data for hundreds of miles, while others flying nearby were untouched. Officials believe the jamming was a test of electronic warfare equipment designed to confuse NATO forces, but Russia has never admitted responsibility. Because GPS is used by everything from aircraft to smartphones, these attacks revealed how vulnerable modern navigation remains to a well-placed burst of invisible energy. Phantom Cell Tower Signals In cities around the world, phone users sometimes connect to cell towers that shouldn't exist. These so-called MZ catchers, or stingrays, look to a phone like normal network equipment, but they are actually portable devices that imitate cell towers. Once a phone connects, the operator can capture identifying numbers, track locations, and even intercept calls and texts. Security researchers have found mysterious towers in places like Washington, D.C., and foreign embassies where no official carrier operates. Many of these phantom signals appear only for a few hours before vanishing, making them hard to investigate. Governments admit to using IMSI catchers for law enforcement, but the full list of operators is secret, and hackers could build their own versions with off-the-shelf parts. For everyday users, there's no warning. Phones automatically link to the strongest tower. The sudden appearance of these invisible stations shows how the airwaves around us can be quietly manipulated, leaving open questions about who is listening and why.